Hey folks, this is Johnny and welcome to another Home Studio Trainer Show. Uh, what we're going to look at today is something old. And no, it's not me. Uh, we're going to look at the old Personas fader port. I have been getting a lot of emails lately that they've uh, purchased one on eBay and this and that. So I thought I'd go ahead and do a video on it. Uh, seeing that uh, the original video is long gone. Uh, okay, so... One of the first things uh, that I have to stress, do not, <laughs> do not update the firmware. There is a newer firmware out there. A lot of people are finding it say, hey, you know what? I just got a fader port, an old fader port off of eBay, and I just upgraded the firmware and it doesn't work. <laughs> okay, well, that firmware is... You can't use it. Um, so what I'm going to be doing is I did have someone send me a copy of the firmware that does work, and I will be posting that. I'll be putting that as a link in the description so that you guys can actually uh, uh, get it and backdate your uh, firmware. All right, so what we're going to do is, you guys can see here, I've got my feeder port all set up, and, and I dug this out. Uh, just to do this video, and I'm going to keep it. <laughs> I've got the big mixer here, but <clears throat> I'm going to go ahead and keep this because I like having the shuttle controls here for Studio One, even though I've got them on my um, on my uh, Series 3. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to access the uh, setup in Studio One, and we're going to go ahead and we're going to go through all of the features on a fader port that's very, very old and still works. So uh, stay tuned to the description in this video. As soon as I get the uh, original firmware uploaded, I'll put a link to it so that you guys can get it. <laughs> Clearing my throat here while I turn the volume down. All right, so let's go ahead. If you guys could, before we get started, if you guys could, I'd really appreciate it. If you would like this video, subscribe to the channel and enable the notifications so that you know when these videos are going to start. And if you guys could, there is a member option. I have one member <laughs> to support the channel. So go ahead, become a member. Uh, there are three affordable levels to actually support the channel. Uh, not doing too well uh, so far in the membership. Uh, or you can just go ahead and go to Patreon, follow the links in the description, and there's like 26 people over there. So if you'd rather do that, I completely understand. All right, so here we are in uh, one of my songs here. And what we're going to do is we're going to open up the fader port, and we're going to go through some of the features and how to program it. All right, so uh, obviously we have the shuttle controls. We must tell them <clears throat> that this choice might not be. And of course we got stop, we have uh, rewind, and we have fast forward, which I wish the newer fader port had this. I think it's got a rewind, but it doesn't really shuttle like this one does. All right, and of course you have your record arm. There is also a foot pedal input in the back where you can set it up to actually uh, initiate record. So good old-fashioned uh, Porta Studio punch pedal you can set up with this. And you know what? That's what a lot of people are buying this for, just for the pedal, which you can assign to start, stop. You can assign it to record. You can assign it to just about anything that is available in Studio One. <clears throat> All right, so uh, you can see it has a knob here, right here, and this has two functions. So if I go ahead and I pull up the mixer, I can hit the mix button here. Boom, there's the mixer. So if I select a channel, I'm going to select this green guy right here, right there. I can actually control the pan back and forth. Really, really nice. <clears throat> and uh, it, it is a notched kind of a knob so you feel the bumps and stuff as you turn it okay so there we go so there we have that set up there all right so if we go through the top we obviously have mute solo and then you can arm the track with that button there all right so here we have banks now this doesn't quite work the way that you would expect it you can actually go ahead and use the arrow buttons to go through one channel at a time. If I hit the bank button, it's supposed to go through a groups of eight, but it doesn't do that. <laughs> so just keep the little bank button off and there we go. We can actually page through the channels that way. 
All right, right here we have an output button. This one's labeled output. So if you hit the output, this fader becomes a level four, the main out. I'm going to take that out. You can see that my buttons, they sometimes blink. <laughs> it's like, um, if you don't use it that often, they kind of jump on you. So just make sure that you press them all before you fire it up and it kind of loosens things up. <clears throat> all right, so now we have the automation options. We have read, and you can see here that it's actually activating the read. Right, and touch, and I don't have any idea what the off button does doesn't really do anything because I can actually still change. So obviously this was for an older feature uh, because these used to be also set up for Cubase. So I'm not 100% sure. All right. So now we have the mix button uh, and we can open up and close the mixer. We have the project button, which is actually the editor. And then the uh, trans button, I have no idea what that's for. I believe it was for an alternate transport. Uh, if you open and close this, you are actually activating and deactivating the browser. Very cool. All right, so now let's go to these buttons here. These are actually quite cool. You can see that there are little uh, black options and stuff underneath these and stuff boy that's professional isn't it uh we have um let's see we have the for the transport we have punch we can activate the punch and that works you can barely see it right down here let's see can you guys see it oh you guys can't see it let me see if i can move the image up just a little bit let me go ahead and do this and there we go And we're going to do the punch. If you look down here, you can activate and deactivate the punch. And this is a user button. And right now I don't have this thing set to anything, but I'll show you how to set that. And then of course we can activate and deactivate the loop. Now, if you hit shift, you have a bunch of options that you can do with the shift. All right, so if, I wouldn't say a punch, you have several. <laughs> so if I activate the shift button, these become previous and next for markers. And then you can actually use this to create a marker. Just like that. See right there. So if I undo, let's see, we don't want to do that. Let's turn off shift and do undo. There we go. So keep your eye right there. Uh, if I activate shift and I hit this mark button, boom, you put some marker in there. And we're going to go ahead, go back, and undo. Perfect. All right, so let's activate the shift button. Now, this is going to be previous and next for the marker, so I'm not going to go ahead and go. You guys get the general idea on that. But the cool thing about when you activate the shift button, the pan knob becomes a scroll wheel. Now, it's not a scrub. <laughs> it is a scroll wheel, so you can scroll through your song. works really really well i think it's snapping to the grid yeah there you go so that's nice to have so now uh when the shift is activated the um, fast forward and rewind button become buttons to go to the end of the project or the beginning of the project. So it's kind of like an RTZ, return to zero. There you go. See, RTZ. It says RTZ right there, although you can't see it. Perfect. All right, so let's turn that off. All right, so now you've uh, we've already gone through the shuttle controls. Okay, so the question is, so now how do I set up the punch pedal input on the back? and the user button okay if you go here and you click on the this part of control link you'll actually see the fader port oh this is important <clears throat> 
this is really important. So now, once you plug in your fader port, it will automatically set up in Studio One. However, it does not show up in Universal Control. It does not, and it won't. Okay? So you, you're not going to see it in Universal Control because it is older, and it works on what's called a class-compliant driver. Uh, actually, it's a customized class compliant driver because it automatically sets up in Studio One. If you actually go to, let's see here. If you go to the, let me see, what do I want to do here? I want to go to Studio One. I want to go to Preferences, and I'm going to go to External Devices. You can see here, oh, I can get rid of this because I moved it to my other system. Here we go, and the Atom SQ is on the other system. All right, so if you look here, dum, 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 there we go. It sets it up automatically. There's nothing that you should have to do, although I have had a couple people say it didn't set up, so then you would actually go ahead and you would click on Add, then you would click on Control Surface, and then you would actually select the... Uh, the fader port from here Let's see where is it here see personas bang see the fader port yep there it is just like that and you would set the in and out see from and send to and then you would actually click okay and it would be there but in most cases for the people have been like god i think there's eight now eight eight of my clients that actually have the older fader port now but uh the most of their only one person it didn't set up and i never was able to figure out why all right, so there we go. So there is how to set that up. So now, so you go here and you click on the fader port and it opens up this neat little picture of the fader port, which I think is really cool. So let's see, let's go ahead and go out of, let's see, we're out of that and it actually, nice right there. And if you do move it here, you can see the fader moves. All right, so if you click on the pan button, you can't really set anything up there. If you click on the user button right here, just click once on it and right click, you can assign anything <laughs> that Studio One has available to it. Just like that, it's really easy. So what do I wanna uh, set it to? Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to set the user button to save. There we go. So now if I close the dialog and let's say I make a change, let's open up the mixer and we'll make a slight change up and then back. And then I'm going to hit the user button. Should save, watch the window. Boom, done, perfect. All right, let's go back here. Let's go back to the fader port, and here is the punch control. Now, right now, I have this set for start, stop, so I can actually plug in a pedal, and it will start. Do here, it'll start. And stop, just like that. Oh, actually, I take that back. It looks like I have it set up to record. So, let's go ahead and right click. Let's assign the command. And let's see, we should be able to get transport. There we go. And we're going to say toggle start. And all I gotta do is click on this to test it. There we go. So you can actually test that. If I clicked on this, it'll actually do a save, but I don't wanna do that now because I've made a couple changes. All right, so let's see. We have the bank buttons. So now I have the bank button, but it really doesn't. I don't think I can. No, I can't assign it. So the bank buttons. Now I might have this wrong as far as. Oh, it's actually banking through. Oh, no, it's actually just doing single, single channels through. So we got follow. Oh, there we go. Okay, so now it's following as I go through. And then I have output. 
So now this is the output for the main fader. And then we can turn that off. Okay, well, that gives you a general idea on how to actually assign and set everything up. thought you could turn that off. Maybe not. Okay, anyway, so I'm going to turn it off here. There we go. <laughs> Perfect. All right, so that is pretty much it. That is how to set up and control the old school fader port with your system. Now, I have, um, like I said, about eight people. I think eight people have actually contacted me. It might be more than that, but I can only remember eight off the top of my head here. Uh, so uh, the, all of those people actually purchased one. They purchased them used. Some uh, Two guys purchased them from Reverb. Another one purchased them from a site that I didn't even think was still selling them, but I think they're refurbished or, new, or used. Um, and most of the people got them off eBay. And usually they range anywhere from $49 to $60 is what I've actually seen. Some people are trying to get $200 for them, but uh, you should be able to get a good deal for one of these fader ports. And like I said, now the buttons, when you press them, they click. So it's important to remember that, you know, since they're a little older, you're going to have to kind of go through them before you plug it in and just make sure that everything clicks and everything works. Make sure that the knob actually works. And again, the most important part of all this, the most important part of all this is do not, under any circumstances, update the firmware. So if your fader port, you plug it in, you set it up, and it works right out of the box. Fader moves and everything. Make sure you have the power supply plugged in, too. Um, then you're good. So if you get a fader port online and the fader doesn't work, don't panic. You, all you have to do is to downgrade the, uh, the firmware for it. So now I don't know the process of upgrading uh, the firmware at this point in this video. I'm going to do a separate video while I go ahead and do some testing on another uh, older fader port that I have. Yes, I have an older one than this. And uh, I'll uh, eventually do a video on how to actually do the firmware. But if you just got one and you plug it in and you can see that it works, now you know how to set up some of the customization and how to use it again a lot of the people that i've dealt with are actually just getting it so they can plug a pedal in and they can punch old school like we used to do on our porta studios for those of you that are uh, older than dirt like myself <laughs> so if you remember that uh you will actually be able to uh function just like an old school studio with studio one and have a punch pedal now most i think all of the new fader ports also have a pedal input so it's not exclusive to this but if you're looking for a, a cheap alternative to the fader ports that are out there and available See if you can find one, because I think it's definitely worth the purchase. All right, that's going to do it for me. Hopefully you guys got something out of this video, and I will see you all in the next video.